All right, welcome to lesson three of Java programming. In this lesson, we're going to create another application designed for adding integers. Um, this is pretty much coming straight out of the book. I know how to do it um, in my head, but um, the program itself with the names are pretty much coming straight from the book. Uh, but it's hard, it's hard to change it around too much. Um, so what we're going to do is you can just, if you still have text print.java open from previous, we can just close that. We won't be using it. We're going to open a new Java project. We're going to name this one Addition. And we're going to open a new class file. And we're going to name it Addition. And you might as well just check the public static void main string args just so you don't have to type it and click OK. I'm going to get rid of this nonsense and this nonsense. Up here, uh, as I stated before with our good programming language or practice, I guess, we're going to write what it does. So we're going to say a program that adds two integers Oops. input by the user author and just write your name you will not your name but like your actual name and then date is 9-16-2011 still? Whoops. There we go. Inversion. The version isn't as important in these just basic programs because there really isn't multiple versions to them unless as you go on you want to come back to this addition and you want to make it so it adds multiplies subtracts divides and then takes the square root of something if you get that far and you feel like doing that um, you certainly can but then what we're gonna do after here we're gonna go down a few times and right in on top of the public class I mean you could do it up here too we need to type import Java dot util dot scanner and then make sure to end it there and this is saying that this class requires here I'll write it here class needs scan uh, scanner and this is coming from pre-existing Java um, things. That's one of the nice things about Java is you don't, I think if they said it in here, or I heard it somewhere, is you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can you can use things that have already been made for, um, for this purpose. And the scanner class and pretty much everything in the java.util is very useful and all you have to do is import it. Um, what a scanner does is it allows you to um, have the user input information and then it can read that information and use it to output other la information later. So again, I'm going to put that down there and write class addition and same stuff down here. Run. Ooh, that was bad. Runs program. Now, in here, we're going to write scanner input equals new scanner, and then in parentheses, you're going to write system.in. We're going to come out here, and we're going to semicolon there. And this is stating that the input scanner is a new scanner that is like a system.in scanner. So we're going to go down a little further here. And 
we're going to type our variables and these are going to be integers so we start with the keyword int and then we're going to do let's do num1 just because I don't want to type out number we're going to do int num2 and we're going to do int and we're going to do sum alright and remember you should be putting your comments here I'm not doing it for time's sake right now. We're going to go down just a little further. Give you some time if you're still writing. And then we're going to type system.out.print. We've done this before. And we're going to just write enter first. You don't need to capitalize that. Enter first integer. And the reason you specify it's an integer is because it won't work with decimals or fractions of the such. Um, so it has to be an integer, as in a whole number, pretty much. And then make sure you leave your... Oh, I didn't have my parentheses there. There we go. Make sure you do your semicolon. And then we're going to hit under, under, enter, <laughs> sorry, under there. And you're going to type num1. If you typed, if you made it number earlier, that's fine. Just number, number one, num1, either way, equals input dot next int parentheses, and then nothing in the parentheses, and then semicolon. Go down a little ways, and we're going to do system system dot out dot print we're gonna type enter second integer and you don't have to but I, I'm I, well, I'm not sure I think you have to put a space after the colon there in the thing I don't know everywhere I've seen it you have to so I'm just might as well do it and then after that, we're going to do num2, number2, two, whatever you had written up up here, equals input dot next int. And then there we go. Then we're going to go down a little ways, and we're going to write sum equal, oops, that's not the equals num1 plus num2 make sure you semicolon close it off there and we're gonna go down and we're gonna type system dot out dot print f here's where the print f comes in as I was talking about earlier um, this is where it makes more use full than what I showed previously we're gonna write sum oops that's spelt wrong sum is then we're gonna hit a space and we're gonna put a parenthesis or not a parenthesis a, a percent symbol there it is D and then we're gonna do the new line character and then end your quotes and Eclipse brought up one of the little format things again for me so I don't have to enter my comma if that doesn't come up for you or you're using a different program you'll need a comma after the parentheses or not after the quotations there excuse me and then you'll come over here in the arguments and you'll write sum and what's that what that is telling you um, print F that percent D is the integer sum and sum up here we stated sum equals num1 plus num2 and we stated num1 equals the next nu or next integer inputted by the user and number two well, then this will print and number two equals the next integer that the user inputs and presses enter obviously so then this states that it equals that plus that and percent d is sum. So we'll semicolon that there. And that should be it for the program. Again, make sure you're having your
comments here. Um, first number as anything. Just it's good practice for a while, just so you kind of have an idea. If you come back a little while after, or maybe I have a break in videos and you kind of forgot something that you were doing, if you open up your, one of your programs your comments will kind of tell you what you were doing and it it'll make a little more sense obviously you want to be a slightly more detailed than saying first number um because that doesn't help too much but we'll run it here and i'm going to just click always save before launching and hit ok and down here we see enter first integer so i'm going to click it and i'm going to say eight and hit enter and then it says set enter second integer let's do 200. Now before I hit enter, hopefully all of you can add 200 plus 8. So you should know that it's 208. So if I hit enter, there you go, it says sum is 208. And obviously you can get more advanced with this. You can make it so it multiplies them, divides them. Um, if you add more numbers, you can make it do like an, like an order of operations or even like um, you could basically set it up to do a formula for you, um, which I may may show later, like an algebra formula, like um, what's a good one, uh, like slope intercept form is one that comes right off the top of my head. Y equals m x plus b. You could set it up where it'll ask you to enter the certain numbers, and then it'll solve for it or whatever you have to do. So I'm going to check my time here quick. Alright, I have a few minutes left. I don't want to make it too long. Um, I believe, like I said last time, how I was going to put the uh, words with definitions. I might just put them in captions as I mention them. It'll take a little more work, but I think it will be easier in the long run. So I can go over a few of those. I've already talked about scanner and um, I didn't really mention new. New is a keyword that tells Java this is going to be a new object or a new whatever um, you're declaring in this case was scanner. Um, int as I mentioned stands for integer. Um, it's stating that num1, num2, and sum are all integers. Um, if I were to do string if I would type string and then hello, then hello would be referred to, as, I could refer to it as a string in the same sense that I use num1 for an integer. I hope that makes sense. Um, there's a few other things. There's different types of data it mentions here on the page I'm looking at called float and double for holding real numbers. And uh, char, I guess you'd pronounce it, C-H-A-R for holding character data um character data and everything um so there's a bunch more information around here that I can I can try to go into more um detail later but basically it all comes later in uh the lessons um it just it kind of all falls together so I can't think of anything else to show in here right now. Um, there's a table in here kind of relates algebra expression to Java expressions and whatnot, like, um, but pretty much it's, it's very simple. Um, as we go through, um, I would, I can demonstrate more, um, things like here, I guess I can change this quick. Instead of a plus symbol there, if you put an asterisk, that's saying multiply. So now all we have to do is rerun the program. And if I put 200 and then 8, like I did last time, instead of 208, it'll be 1600. Um, because it multiplied 200 by 8 or 800 by 2, however you want to look at it. Um, you can also do division which is I believe is just like this so if we run it again um, what's a 10 divided by 2 we should get 5 there we go 
there's obviously subtraction. Just go like that. I don't think I need to show that one. Um, there is also here. I guess if I do division, and as I was saying, how it's an integer. Well, if I enter fifteen and two, obviously fifteen isn't divisible by two, and it'll give you the number seven. Well, that's not right. But fourteen divided by two is seven, so it's giving you, um, it's giving you the answer without the remainder. Uh, if we go like this and put a percent symbol and run the program, and let's use those same numbers, fifteen and two, you see we get one. So essentially, you would be able to com combine these, and it would say the answer is. 7 remainder of 1 as in 1 integer is unable to be divis or divided by 2 in a sense um, so and you can also um, show that in a uh, like in a program I'm pretty sure you could go complex and m make a program that tells you whether something's divisible by something else um, but that would take uh, more lines of code and some trickery that I believe we get into later if I remember correctly um, and then in algebra I guess I can bring this up quick um, let's just go up here in a comment in algebra you'd be y equals I'll use this mx plus b which I brought up earlier which is slope form or slope intercept in uh, Java it would be y equals m times x oops x plus b so basically it's it's non obeying the rules or the shortcuts of algebra where you can put variables right next to each other um, but essentially that's the same prob uh, problem uh, Java still follows um, orders of operations so I believe that's it for this lesson I'll get into something different in a little bit so thanks for watching